Thank you, John and Helen. My name is Farah Owotomo. Over the last week, I have grappled with the word culture. I thought I understood what it meant, but I realize I still don't. I've confused culture and tradition, and the question I've been asking everyone, including my trusted friend Google, is what is culture? And culture is a way of life of a group of people, meaning how they do things. Essentially, it is the patterns of learned and shared behavior and beliefs of a particular social, economic, age, or corporate organization, well, groups. Basically, the attitudes, values, goals, and practices that characterizes different institutions and groups of people. Thankfully, John, Helen, and Mazi have tackled the evolution and types of culture, making my job easier, as I only have to concentrate on understanding the impact of culture. And to help simplify this is Ifeolua Fashola, Group CEO of Kidari Capital Limited. When I was looking for the perfect host for today, Ifeolua's name came up. I wondered why. But after speaking with her at length, I got it. Imbibing culture is an integral part of who she is. So much so that her company has an internal course they teach their staff called acculturation, meaning adaptation and assimilation. Welcome, Ife. It is such an honor to have you here with us today. I'm excited. So let's try and see how much we can impact in 25 or so minutes. Okay. What is culture? Um, so when you say what is culture, you already defined culture when we were starting. So yes. what, what is culture to me? To you, yes. Um, and it's my understanding of the various, the ways of life and the norms, you know, the social norms. Um, of the various places you go to. Okay. So the culture will be different in different places. Okay. And it would even be different in places within places. Okay. So you have culture within a church. You mm -hmm. have culture within a workplace. You mm -hmm. have culture within a family, mm -hmm. you know, and then a bigger, like a tribe, a clan. So it widens out. But what is your culture within your family? Within my family. We're very Yoruba in my family. Okay. So... Um, we, we, we used to live in England. We're all British passport holders. So we're British, you know, in quotes. But we're Yoruba people. And I tell my children, please, you're Yoruba first. British for passport, Yoruba for culture. Okay. You know? <laughs> so that's, okay. that's it. So yeah. what are the things, what are the kind of things you make them, what are the things you imbibe in them you know, as a Yoruba? <laughs> coming, for, coming for this show, right, I asked my daughter, the eldest one, I said, um, when we talk about culture, when you hear the word culture, give me one word mm. for you as a Yoruba girl. What pops in your mind when you hear the word culture? And she said respect. True. So um, those are the kind of things that we, my children kneel down, even when we're living in England, they would kneel down for elders and all mm. of that. That is a very Yoruba thing. It's not a Nigerian thing, it's a Yoruba thing. You're more likely to see a Yoruba person kneeling down. Okay. You know, and I just teach them that because I don't know where they're going to end up in future. So I don't know if my, some, somebody's son is going to take my daughter home. And the one thing that will determine the first 25 years of her marriage is whether she knelt down on day one or not. You know, so let's just cover all the bases. True. I also think that we should not throw away who we are. Very no true. matter how westernized, traveled, bougie, exposed, enlightened, whatever word you want to use, you know, let's not forget who we are. Let's remember who we are, because that's what makes us, our mm. culture. And then our culture flows into our values. True. You know? True. So let's always remember who we are. And that's what I tell them. Your bad people say, rot your money, ti won she. Remember the child of whom you are. Who you are. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Very true. So in what ways has culture impacted your life over the years? Uh, <laughs> I'll take you around a little bit. Like I said, I used to live in England. Yes. So here was I, a Niger girl, went to England for my master's, ended up staying there and working. Okay. So I was, I was very um, set in my ways in certain things. So I would meet anybody at work who was like really so much older than I, particularly if they were like manager of manager of manager of manager. Mm. Everybody goes around calling everybody Mark, Jane, Truman. I'll call you Mr. Whatever. Mm. Because it just didn't come naturally to me to see people that are much older than I, mm. and then to just blow them their first name. It just, I just always was uncomfortable. 
Now and later, somebody gave me feedback and one day I sat in a meeting and they said, everyone loves working with you and they say you're very good at what you do, but that you're very formal. That you don't, ah. you know, you don't, you don't let loose, you don't let down your hair. Because you, you say Mr. Because um, I call them Mr. This and Mr. That, you know. So they said I was very formal with them. I said, ah, no, I'm not being formal with you. I'm respecting you. That's how we do where I'm coming from. So did you break yeah. it down for them so that they actually understood oh, yes. your culture better? Oh, yes. And that's one thing about me. And that's probably why you said somebody mentioned my name. Yes. I make it my job to educate people. Okay. Or particularly on culture. Particularly on our culture. You know, my company, we have, we have tentacles in Ghana. Mm. You know, so when I'm in Ghana, I'm always telling them, look, my Ghanaian brothers and sisters, you know, we are Nigerian. And to us, this means this. So please tell me what it, whatever we're doing means to you as well. Because you find out, you know, they use this word culture shock. True. Do you True. understand? You get somewhere and what is normal where you are coming from is an abomination where you've, got, where you've gotten to. Mm. So you have a culture shock. Because you do something, everybody looks at you like you're crazy. Very and to true. you, you think you're doing the right thing. Very true. And even amongst us in Nigeria, you look at the major tribes of Nigeria. It is very normal for a 12-year-old girl in the north of Nigeria to carry her bag and go to her husband's house. Okay. It is very not normal in the south of Nigeria to have that. And we live happily ever after. Okay. But that's, that's normal, 12-year-old carrying her bag and going to her husband's house is a completely different conversation that I don't even want to <laughs> go into because that's, yeah, let's not even go so, there. But I, so, I, I, I understand what you mean. So you see, when you talk about culture, you have to take the good and the bad, that there would always be negative aspects to our culture as well. Which is where the problem lies. And I think that's why people are jettisoning a lot of their cultural, a lot of it. A lot of it. you know, the things that we should imbibe because there's so much negative that goes with it. How, how, do, you, how do you address that? Um, a young girl, I, I, I was so heartbroken last week because a young girl who is PA to one of my friends lost her husband of less than a year. They just got married less than a year and he died in an accident. Wow. And she had to shave off her hair. What? She's Igbo, and that's, that's what you do. Your husband or your dad or someone dies, you sh they cut your hair. So they had to cut her hair. So here she was, young girl. She's just lost her husband. She's, she's in a terrible state of mind. And then you've cut off her hair. You know what hair means to a woman? Yes. We just, we just take it very, you know, like you go to the salon, and they are coming, and a few strands fall on the ground, and yes. you are eyeing the poor stylist. Yeah. Do you understand? So somebody now shaves off your hair after you've just been traumatized by the death of your husband. Does Those are aspects. Get over that kind of trauma? You, you know, it's, it's almost like completely dehumanizing and debasing you because this thing happened. But then if you ask those whose culture it is, they will have a deeper meaning to it. Mm. And when they explain it, it would make sense mm. in some kind of way. But where I'm sitting, I was just traumatized for her. That is the negative impact of culture. So you'd see, you'd see that all the time. You'd see both the good and the bad. Okay, so, so, so would you then say culture, tradition, and our values are all intertwined? Completely, completely, completely. So? Tradition talks to more of a system of beliefs. So the things that are deep rooted. So like, remember when, thank God, we don't have that anymore. But in some parts of Nigeria, they would kill twins because they were, they were believed to be evil. So once you have twins, you know, they'll just yes. kill them off. That was a terrible tradition. Do you understand? And um, so what value do you place on the life of a twin in that area? Zero. Especially as in, in certain cultures, having, a tw having twins is the most amazing, wonderful thing. Absolutely. So you can imagine within the same country, all you have to do is travel a few hours down the road. And when you have twins, you're celebrated. The Yorubas, everybody will call you Iyabeji. Mm. And you're, you're deemed to be special amongst women. Yes. You know, for it. So you would always find, and those things determine values that we place on things. Our culture, our tradition absolutely determine our values.
does it then devalue who we are as a people? So it depends. So we said we take the good and the bad. There are some traditional practices and some aspects of our culture that I believe are very demeaning and devaluing. And I just gave one. Yes. You know, but that's just my opinion, right? Yes. Because I don't know the deeper, you know, reason behind that. Just yes. on the surface. So let's talk about some of the good ones. Some of the good ones. So, for example, we talked earlier about respect, right? And how my daughter, I asked her, I said, do you see that as a good thing or a bad thing? She said, well, it actually helps you to, to decide how to address people, how to, she said, imagine even our language, the O and the E. Mm -hmm. So, and it's kind of like a check. Yes, it is. So even if you're a naturally rude person, mm -hmm. or the person is annoying the life out of you, there's still a check on you because you call this person auntie or whatever. The boundaries you will not be able to cross. True. Although they say my bad of people don't see that one, but that's another conversation. <laughs> They will still say, hey, and abuse your They will say, hey, call me. You know, I don't want to be rude to you. If not, that I don't want to be rude to you. I would have told you that your head is not correct. Ah, that's, yeah. that, but that, you know, that's the thing that, for me, I get a bit confused because I'm like, it sounds a bit hypocritical. But like I was saying to you earlier, the older I get, the more I understand it. And I would rather those boundaries Absolutely. than nothing at all. Absolutely. But then what about other cultures that don't necessarily have those types of checks and balances? You see it in how it plays out. Mm. So your average parent raising a child in the West is afraid of police. You cannot True. even correct your child. True. They will call social services and call police. On. Just come and tell me the child in this Lagos of Nigeria that will tell you that they are calling police for their parents. Very true. You Very get true. to the police station and the policeman will beat you. Very true. The policeman will say, now you didn't disrespect your, child, your parents. Do you understand? Very true. Very so you true. can see how it plays out. All those things, they have... You know, it's like a domino effect. You throw away certain things and you throw away certain things with them. You throw away your peace of mind, you know, True. with it when you True. throw away certain aspects of our culture. True. True. So I want to quickly segue into the times we live in, which yeah. is the COVID era. Mm. Would you say there's a, such a thing now as the COVID culture? Absolutely. Yep. And, you know, there's so much negativity to the COVID culture. There are some good parts, which mm -hmm. is everybody learns to wash their hands very well. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Everybody became more aware of what they were putting in their mouth and putting in their body and the mm -hmm. impact of it yes. on their immune system and yes. all of that. So there's a better eating culture. There's a better hygiene culture, hygiene culture yes. and all of that. But we've lost a bit of ourselves. In fact, a huge chunk of ourselves to COVID. I have not hugged my mom properly in over a year. Because I go out, I go to work, I take meetings. So I'm afraid, you know, mm. of that. And I can just imagine the impact on her. Mm. So now we can't just freely hug each other. We mm. can't be affectionate. Mm. We've lost a lot to COVID. So I, 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 would then, I would then say it's probably time for us to now actually revisit the idea of the culture, of our culture, look at the world we currently live in, the COVID world, and re- design a culture that is um, palatable or more palatable, figure out how to show affection without um, causing the person harm. I, d I don't know if such a thing is possible. So I've been thinking about that, what you just said, right? So when people date now, what happens? You know how the whole thing about the first kiss yes. and all of that, all of that is out of the window now because you can't be kissing anybody. You first show them your... COVID vaccination <laughs> test, <laughs> <or> COVID <laughs> negative and the last time you took a test. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. But okay. So at the beginning, I had talked about something you did in your organization called acculturation. Yeah. Can you quickly tell me about what that is? Okay. So it's something not only that we do in our organization, it's something we do for our clients as well, because we're risk consultants amongst other things. We're investment bankers, but we also have a risk management consulting unit. And when we go out, we do something called acculturation for our clients mm. as well. What you do is you're building a culture. You decide as a firm, as a company, and we take it from the board down. What are the ideas, ideals, values, and practices that you want to entrench as a company, mm. as a firm? Mm. And think about if you have 
how many branches across the whole of Africa, you want to have the same culture. Mm. You want to have the same ideals. You want to have the same values. And you want to have a uniformity of practices that would, that would showcase that culture. Okay. So it's about first identifying what those things are mm -hmm. and then um, codifying it. So when I say, you know, you put it in a framework in a of sorts. Yes, and then document. we find a way of implementing it, rolling it out across, across board. board. And it takes time mm. because, you know, acculturation is not something that happens in a, in a meeting room where you give a presentation and everybody says, okay, yes, and they move on. Mm. So you now go through a process and a period of acculturation and it's ongoing because people come, people go. Yes. So, so you find that it's process. a continuous thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So what I got from that is your ideas, ideals, values, and practices. And I dare say that can actually come into play within families as well. You sit down as a family and decide what do we stand for? What is our family culture? Mm -hmm. And begin to imbibe that into the children, the staff, everybody, and then it kind of translates to everything you do. I, I think that's a really, really good thing for everybody to try and do. So very quickly, my last question is this. Can you give us two to three examples of everyday cultural impact? Something that we can go away and say, okay, to be a better cultured person from today, I'm going to do these two or three things moving forward. Okay, I think that um, in all of our languages, we have very abusive words. And we do not hesitate to use them. Okay. So I was having a conversation with my children last night because somebody called somebody a name and somebody has refused to let go. And I, and I said, well, you know, we have a culture of no name calling. Hmm. You don't, no name calling. And it starts with me. So you will never hear me insulting my help. If you do something no. wrong, I'll correct you and I'll tell you, I don't like this. Please, if you can't do things my way, you can't work for me. But to now say you are stupid, you are an idiot, no, 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 it does not, it does not happen. Mm. Do you mm. understand? Mm. And so I tell the children, have you, do you hear me? Do I call you names? And that is it. I don't even do that with them. Mm. So see, mm. if I don't, if I can restrain myself, I told them last night, I said, do you people think that the way you behave sometimes, can you not name it yourself? They started laughing. I said, yeah, do I call you the names that you behave mm. sometimes? Mm. And they said, no, I said, if I can mm. restrain myself, so, so can you. you. Okay, so that's one. So that's one, and that, has, that is very important in the workplace. Yes, because in Nigeria, true. you hear of bosses who, who are, are very rude to their staff. Their staff. Yes. And I think it's unconscionable, it's uncalled for. Yes. It's part of being professional to be able to express yourself, even express your anger and displeasure without, without being, being rude or disrespectful. disrespectful. Yes, that's very yeah. true. Okay, so, so, so that's one. The second one is the culture of timekeeping. You see this thing they call African time. Can so vex me. Eh? Hmm. I do not like it. And then they now have a worse version of it it's called Nigerian time. Hmm. And that one, please don't even get me started. So in my office, we have what we call Kedari time. Kedari is a Yoruba word. It's a Yoruba word for Sida. Kedari. Right. Yes. So that's, that's, that's the name of the company. And we have what we call Kedari time. Kedari time is 15 minutes to... So if I have an appointment with you, you know what time early. I got here this morning? Yes. If I have an appointment with you for nine, I must be at the site by quarter to nine. Because what we preach is that if the appointment is for nine, it means the meeting starts at nine. Not that you're strolling at nine. Very true. You should be settled and ready to go by nine. Very true. Very true. So that's two things. One more so thing. So that's two things. I want me to give you a third. One more thing. I think that we all need to treat our bodies better. Eat right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Eat oh. right. Eat right. Exercise. Exercise. Okay. So what I'm going to term this is <laughs> Ifeolua Fashola's three cultural impacts mm. for everyday living. No abusive language, timekeeping, eating right and exercising properly. Absolutely. Those are things that we can do every day. Mm -hmm. And I am so, so thankful that in the short timeline we have, we have been able to hopefully really just at least touch on the topic of impact and cultural, cultural impact. So I'm really quite grateful for that. So if I thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me this morning. Thank you. This has actually <laughs> been quite an exciting conversation, you know, and I'm happy. 
I'm happy that we've been able to have this. And I cannot wait for us to continue unpacking culture and tradition. And next Saturday with me is somebody who is very dear to me. Um, I'm not going to tell anybody who it is, but if you follow us at Plus TV Africa or follow me at Ferran Shonuga Owotomo, you would get more information on our guest for next week. Thank you so much. With us next is our fitness instructor. <laughs>